hey guys so it is monday i just got home from statistics class yeah um so today i actually only have two classes but i skipped infectious because i work till 11 tonight and um I just wanted to make sure I got good sleep and I went to school totally forgetting that I skipped class. I ran into a classmate so we were walking and talking and then she let me into the classroom door and I walked in on um, looking at my phone so I didn't even realize there was a class in there. I looked up and I realized there was the class was completely full with a hundred students so I walked straight back out and the person teaching was actually the faculty um that is in charge of my organization so i felt so bad i was like oh no like i'm already like skipping class and i'm interrupting his class oh yeah but yeah so i had one, that one class today and then i'm working right now it's currently 12 30. i gotta leave around 1 30 to make it to work at two o'clock then i work from two to um 10 30 but usually we get out after 10 30 because when you work in the hospital you leave whenever you finish with all the stuff you need to get done so you don't technically leave when the time you need to clock out and then tomorrow i have my first csa clinical skills assessment they're kind of teaching us how to be a doctor in a way because we are assigned a block time for 30 minutes and you come in during that time and then you will be given a patient with um, a fake illness so it'll be a preceptor we'll go in um, ask why they're here collect some medical information and then after you you ask them okay what are my findings if you do the right appropriate test and you touch them correctly to where you would have found their findings they will give you your findings and in the end you write a soap note and um you determine the diagnosis and treatment so that's a little different but it's pretty cool i like it but it's kind of scary because this 30 minute session is 100 points so I'm only going to get to study right now before work and then probably not after work since I'm going to be so tired. Alright, I'm going to hit the books, guys. It is 1.30 a.m. started studying for my stats exam. That's in a few hours at 8 a.m. today. Um, I heard it was an easy exam, so I had a lot of stuff going on this weekend. So I was like, okay, I'll study last minute, but that probably was not a good idea. I mean, it's pretty easy stuff, stuff we did in undergrad, maybe a little bit different, but you should never cram for an exam in general. I'm about, to, I'm about finished up, so I just saw that we have our assigned seating posted for our exam. We usually don't do this, but it's just so funny. It has our names, and then we're assigned seating, so. Hey guys, so it's currently 9. 39 p.m. Last time I talked to you guys, I was studying for my stats exam last night, I believe. Um, that was probably the first exam I actually crammed in pharmacy school. Just because I heard from the upperclassmen that this that this semester, the only class you really had to study for is infectious and everything else is pretty much an easy A. And pretty much statistics here in uh, pharmacy school it's very similar to what you did in undergrad i think we take a bunch of different statistics classes in pharmacy school but this one is very general and a lot of it is very familiar and easy standard deviation mean mode range i don't really remember a type one type two error so just to recap first uh, before this exam on friday i had a bunch of plans just a lot of social plans that um, i've really needed i got some ramen with some classmates i did happy hour with some upperclassmen and then i found out some of my high school friends were in town so i hung out with them and i feel like i'm such a social person that um, i haven't been social outside of the academic world like for non-academic um, reasons so it was like a breath of fresh air for me to go and do that so all those plans were on friday and then i worked on saturday and then I pretty much had Sunday to study for stats. So if you don't already know, I am definitely a night person, not a morning person at all whatsoever, which is why I prefer to work late versus waking up at 6 in the morning or coming in at 6 in the morning to the hospital. On Sunday, I didn't set any alarms 
and I slept in pretty late. I can't remember. I think I woke up around 11 a.m. I think I had to like cook or something, but I felt like I didn't study till pretty late. And by the time I hit the harder stuff, I mean, not the hard stuff, but the more less definition based and conceptual things, I was pretty tired. When I was showing you guys at like 1.30, I think I still had like one lecture or PowerPoint left and that was actually important for the exam. And I, uh, I was just like, oh, it's okay, I get it, I get it, but I was half asleep. I turned my food time behind me into kind of like a bed, like I got an air bed and like, just because um, the futon is not comfortable to me, so um, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But it definitely made me more in the living room because I used to always spend more time in my bedroom. But yeah, the exam wasn't too bad. Um, just It was pretty much what I expected. But since I only had about three hours of sleep, I felt like I couldn't use my brain as well. Like I could really feel the difference. I have not gone sleep before but i don't know why i just felt more tired maybe because i usually i actually never work weekends so um it might have been a combination of all of that for this exam for some reason we didn't get our grade back right away so we take our exam on exam soft it's like a program that shuts down everything on your computer and then you're given a password in class you type it in you take the exam, you submit the exam, and usually right after, you get your grade back right away when you submit it. So we didn't get that, and that's one thing I really love about pharmacy school is that you get your exam back, your grade back right away. Because in undergrad, you're already, after an exam, you're already so doubtful, you question everything, and then, um, then you get over it, and then you get your exam back a week later, and... Um, you, if you don't get the grade you want, you're devastated all over again. So, but we'll see. I hear that this class is, um, easier, so I'm not too worried about it. After I did a bunch of errands, I knocked out. Yeah, I woke up, I think at 7. I haven't taken a nap this semester yet, like, after... I don't think I have and I think I've been very good with my sleeping schedule this semester so I've been a lot better at waking up on time and not being sleep deprived I feel like I got a lot better at it but I don't know when it comes to exam time it just I go back into my natural habitat every Tuesday I have patient assessment that class is where a preceptor comes in and we're given like a fake case and we do patient interview and try to collect the most information we can to help provide any recommendations for diagnosis. So tomorrow I have that. So before every Tuesday, I always have to do like a module quiz on the chapters that we're going to be going over. Every Tuesday night, I finish up a case study. And with case study, it's a bi-weekly thing where we meet up with the preceptor with a case we're given with a group of our classmates. And we go over a series of questions to help understand understand the case better. This week I am the team leader so I assign the questions to each person in my group and I have to know the case well to present it to the preceptor. So usually I would do this on Tuesday night. I'll do my case study Tuesday night because it's due Wednesday night. Because I have an exam on Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. which is coming up, <laughs> I'm gonna do that right now. And I see, so most of my classmates usually do it last minute too, but I see people in there. Um, so pretty much we create a Google Doc and then we assign the questions. We send everybody the link and then everybody does it on time and then we submit the case on time together. But tomorrow I also have my eboard photo for SSHP. It's professional dress, so I'll be suiting up. I might be carrying my camera around tomorrow. What's the video? <laughs> Documenting? Yeah. <laughs> Now we're doing our headshots. <laughs> and then also tomorrow we have an NCPA lunch meeting. So we have a guest speaker coming in um, to speak to us about um, their independent pharmacy. And yeah, I think that's all I have for tomorrow. But I do have class till 7 p.m. tomorrow since I'm taking uh, Spanish as an elective. So I can't study for my Wednesday exam that much. But I heard this exam, it's not really you have to study. It's more of using the class's preventative care for like public health. I think this exam is more based on pediatrics and knowing their immunizations and things like that. I haven't gone over the material yet, but I heard that it's just knowing how to use the charts and knowing, making sure everybody's qualified for what they need. So I'll go over that tonight too. I also have an APHA ASP banquet on Thursday. I'm excited for that. Uh, every year APHA and ASP 
holds a banquet and they just go over the general things that we did in the past year and then also the new things that are going to come up but it's like a fancy dinner that all of the pharmacy students come to there's going to be an open bar and then a three course meal <laughs> And we all dressed up in ball gowns and things, so that's pretty cool. I bought a ticket for that, but it's right after my lab, so I'm gonna be in a rush. So we'll hopefully things will go well. So today I had class at eight, and then I had a four-hour gap, so I went home to get ready for the banquet. We had class, and then we had lab. So I tried to get ready, or I tried to finish as fast as I could. We did a fast lab today. This is median cream. This is keto propane powder, and this is an alcohol. APA chairs at its all-time highest membership. The, the banquet is its all-time highest ticket count. Uh, all, all time highest participation right now. When Ellie Ann first got involved, she wasn't sure. She came to me, she said she wasn't sure. You know, she didn't like public speaking. And I said, girl, you gotta, you gotta get involved. <laughs> and you know what? I'm being serious when I say Ellie Ann has been a dream to work with. She's a natural leader. person inside and out and you know some people say pharmacy school is about is about the highest grade you get in pharmaceutics but it's not about that it's about personal growth and I've seen Eliane come from already top of the pack to legendary and it's a beautiful thing it's something she will always carry with her her whole life. And I'm really appreciative that I've gotten to work with her. I, 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 came in, I couldn't imagine anybody else better. I really couldn't. And so the future of APHA is in good hands. I'm excited. Elian, thank you for this last year. It's been beautiful. This week and next week are my last weeks before spring break. So this is pretty much our midterms right now because we have, yeah, I have four exams before spring break. So I'm going to carry my camera around and hopefully document a little more. I'm going to hit up my case study. Let me show you guys. All right, here's the Google Doc for our case study. I can see my friend Tram is in there right now doing her case, but there's a series of questions. Seems like a lot of people have been doing it. And I assigned myself two questions since I am the team leader. Uh, I have to memorize this case and present to the preceptor. Domestic violence and knowing that the mom has a safe home environment is important as well. We, as the pharmacists, are very focused on her medications. So understanding if she has any limitations to obtaining her medications and knowing that she can access these. And so I just got back from my public health exam. Um, it wasn't too bad. Um, so this exam, um, three different teachers were teaching off of it. And I mostly focused on one professor because she had um, the other two professors. They had one lecture each and the other professor, um, she's a pediatric pharmacist. She had a few lectures. So I thought it'd be more, it, I thought it was better to focus on her material since I was cramming. Uh, I've been so bad this semester and doing um, cramming. But... Um, yeah, with her material, I felt like I mastered it really well. And it was majority, it was a 50 question exam. And I think 15 of them I had to like flag and go back. Well, I didn't need, if I, if I noticed that it wasn't like pediatric or immunization things, I would just flag it and move on because I wanted to make sure I had enough time to um, look at my supplemental material. So on this exam, we're given um, like growth charts and things like that um, so that we can reference from um, 
But yeah, I'm being really bad this semester. Oh yeah, by the way, I think I'm sick. My voice sounds weird if you guys haven't noticed from the previous um, clips. I noticed like, so in pharmacy school, you literally are tested on almost everything. It's not like, okay, this is the professor's fa favorite topic and then they only test you on that. It's, it is like a little bit of everything. Even if like it's not everything, it's like at least a li one question of something that doesn't seem so important. So always make sure you go over all the material because for um, the professor that went over lifestyle like dieting and um, exercise and things like that, um, I just watched her panopto while I was half asleep at like, I think it was 3 a.m. I was watching it and it seemed like common sense so I was like, oh, I'll be fine. I don't need to, I can make educated guesses but her questions were actually fill in the blank. So it was important to go over her material. I think I got like some of it right, but I don't know. It's kind of hard to make educated guesses when it's fill in the blank. So we'll see. My next exam is infectious. So today is Wednesday and my infectious exam is on Monday. So luckily my new job is very understanding. Like I love my job um, at the hospital. They're so understanding with pharmacy students. Like if we have an exam we can definitely take a week off. So um, I just did that because I had so much going on. Not just with exams but other things outside of um, academic after my exam we still so after my exam we did have class but after exams I do not I cannot pay attention in class so I don't want to be sitting in a classroom not paying attention scrolling through Facebook or something so I went home and um I'm just resting up I would go to sleep but I'm scared I'm gonna knock out and like totally miss sore so I have sore which is uh, going to go see uh, my residence at assisted home facility so um yeah usually if I was in class right now too they don't give us time to eat like you kind of have to rush there and then if you pack lunch you can eat like while you're like rushing there but it's no time to sit down and really eat so I'm gonna try to consume something and then do sore um after that I'm probably gonna knock out I do need to submit the case tonight because we usually um as a group so the deadline to submit case studies every week is on Wednesdays um, and our case study is on Friday when we present to the preceptor. But um, since we had an exam today, a lot of people didn't do it. What did I say? Wednesday? So our group, we submit it on Tuesdays just in case like something goes wrong. But um, since we had an exam, a lot of people didn't uh, do it on time. Hopefully I don't knock out past the deadline because I do need to submit it before midnight tonight. But I'm still waiting for um, other people to do their part. So... I'm gonna do that and then the banquet's tomorrow and then I have one more weekend till spring break. Well, I mean, I still have infectious, so I just, <laughs> that's still gonna be really brutal. So um, I need to start studying for that as well. And by the way, I on Monday after stats exam, I got my lashes done and I am so in love with them. Um, half the time I don't get ready for school. Um, so I go to class with a bare face, but I don't like having a bare face. Like, I thought that I'm uncomfortable with, um, it's not that, like, I feel ugly without makeup. Okay, I do kind of feel, I feel way more confident with makeup on, but, um, I have really small eyes. And I feel like lashes make a huge difference on me. I mean, getting lashes done is pricey, but in the long run, if it saves you time, time, like, you cannot money cannot buy time and you cannot get time back so it's very important especially especially when you're and also especially when you're in an environment where you have to uh, be presentable at all times it's 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 also good too and i don't think i mean yeah of course they don't they're obviously not like natural natural but it's better than my thick thick glam my thick thick glam my thick thick strip lashes hopefully i can keep it up and get them filled when i'm supposed to